Imagine standing in a snow-covered forest, the air so cold it burns your lungs. You can see your breath drift away like smoke, the trees groaning under the weight of frost. It's negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, the kind of cold that makes even metal brittle. And yet, through the swirling snow, a faint orange glow shines from the cracks of a small wooden cabin. Inside, someone sits by a flickering fire, warm, calm, and safe. No fancy insulation, no electricity. Just thick logs and human ingenuity. How on earth did medieval log cabins stay warm in temperatures that could kill in hours, while our modern homes with central heating, insulation, and double-glazed windows sometimes still struggle to keep us cozy? Let's go back in time, to a world before electricity, before radiators, before thermostats. Because back then, survival wasn't about comfort, it was about knowledge. The people who built those old log cabins weren't just chopping wood and stacking it randomly. They were applying generations of experience, understanding how nature worked, and using that to build shelters that could literally save their lives. First, let's talk about the foundation of those cabins, the logs themselves. Medieval builders didn't just grab any piece of wood lying around. They chose massive, slow-grown trees, pine, spruce, or fir cut in the winter when the sap was lowest. This mattered because low sap wood shrinks less and keeps its structure tighter, meaning fewer gaps and drafts. The logs were stacked in overlapping corners, interlocked like puzzle pieces. This wasn't just beautiful, it was genius. Every log sealed against the next, creating a solid wall that acted as both structure and insulation. Think of it this way. Each log is a mini insulator. Wood doesn't conduct heat easily, so when you have walls that are literally made of thick wood, you're already holding onto warmth better than modern drywall and metal studs ever could. Those walls could be up to a foot thick. When heat from the fire inside hit the inner surface of the logs, it would slowly move through the wood, but by the time it reached the outside, most of it had been trapped inside the cabin. But it wasn't just about thick wood. It was about sealing every gap. After stacking the logs, builders filled the cracks with moss, clay, and straw, a process called chinking. That simple mixture worked like medieval foam insulation. It kept cold air from sneaking in and warm air from escaping. And when the wind howled outside, the sound would be muffled, not by technology, but by layers of natural material perfectly fitted together. Now, here's where it gets even more interesting. The cabin size. You might have noticed something about old log cabins. They were small. Sometimes, just one room. That wasn't laziness. That was survival strategy. The smaller the space, the easier it was to heat. A single fire could keep a tight cabin warm all night. Compare that to modern homes, where we have massive open floor plans that bleed heat in every direction. Our ancestors understood efficiency without ever using the word. Inside those cabins, every surface helped retain warmth. The floors were often made of packed earth or wood laid over straw. Straw acted as natural insulation beneath their feet. The ceilings were low, trapping heat near where people actually lived. And the furniture, usually built into the walls themselves, minimizing airflow and helping trap body heat. And then, of course, there was the heart of the home, the fire. Unlike the wide-open fireplaces we see in movies, Many medieval cabins used smaller, enclosed hearths. Some even had primitive stone ovens built into the walls. These weren't just for cooking, they were heat batteries. Stone absorbs heat and releases it slowly over time, keeping the room warm long after the flames have died down. People would often bake bread or stew right before bedtime, letting the heat from cooking radiate into the night. In some regions, Families even built their beds directly over or beside the hearth. Imagine lying down on a wooden platform warmed from beneath by the day's fire, a natural version of radiant floor heating. They also used animal hides, wool blankets, and thick straw mattresses that trapped body heat. No electric blankets, 
no space heaters, just centuries of clever adaptation. But the real secret wasn't just in the cabin itself, it was in how people lived. Medieval life revolved around warmth as a shared experience. Families and even livestock often stayed under the same roof during the coldest months. That might sound strange today, but the body heat from animals could raise the temperature of a small cabin by several degrees, and it worked. People also knew how to control airflow naturally. They would position the door away from prevailing winds and use small windows sometimes covered with thin animal hides or oiled cloth instead of glass. These let in light but kept drafts out. It's a level of design thinking that was born from experience, not architecture school. Now, compare that to modern homes. We've built for convenience, not resilience. Our houses are bigger, filled with synthetic materials that might look good but lose heat fast. Modern insulation works great until moisture sneaks in or power goes out. When the electricity stops, most modern homes turn cold within hours. A log cabin? It stays warm for days. Because its walls don't rely on powered systems, they're the system. Let's take an example from modern-day Alaska. Many off-grid cabins built today still follow medieval techniques. Thick log walls, small interiors, low ceilings, and a central wood stove. The reason is simple, those designs work. You can have a raging blizzard outside, and inside it's cozy enough to sit in your shirt sleeves. The cabin itself breathes with the environment, expanding and contracting naturally with temperature changes staying airtight through seasons. And while our ancestors didn't talk about thermal mass, they understood it intuitively. The materials they used, logs, clay, stone, had the ability to store heat energy. When the fire burned, those materials soaked it in. When the fire went out, they slowly released that stored warmth back into the room. That meant stable temperatures, not wild swings between hot and freezing. You could say medieval builders were the original masters of passive heating long before the term existed. Their cabins used orientation, material choice, and natural principles to stay comfortable. In some places, they'd even angle the cabin so the windows faced the winter sun, maximizing daylight warmth. There's also a psychological warmth in these spaces that modern homes can't replicate. Think about the glow of a fire bouncing off log walls, the scent of pine resin and smoke, the creak of wood shifting gently in the cold. It's not just heat, it's atmosphere. People felt connected to their homes in a way we've mostly lost. Now, imagine if we combined that ancient wisdom with modern knowledge. Today, architects are relearning what medieval builders already knew. Thermal mass, airflow control, and natural materials outperform high-tech solutions when things go wrong. During power outages or winter storms, people in older log homes often fare better than those in all-glass, high-efficiency houses. And here's something mind-blowing. The science backs it up. Studies show that thick wooden walls can retain heat longer than many modern materials because of how wood handles moisture and air. Wood naturally regulates humidity, 